What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tradesman Talks. Another Tuesday, another opportunity to, to talk about how we can help your thriving trade-based business or help you get started with one. Or make it a soon-to-be thriving trades-based business. Yeah, yeah. If you have one and it's not doing the greatest, uh, well, truth be told, we all have areas of improvement. So <laughs> maybe we can touch in on a topic that uh, could be improved with your business. Um, but before we, we get to the topic at hand, uh, how's your week been, man? Um, you know, my favorite thing to say is only first world problems around here. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, we've, 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 we've more or less nailed that. It's been a really good week. We've, um, good. we talked a little bit last week. Our, our focus has been, um, getting, reaching stability in the Austin office. And we've done a, a really good job with that. Um, you know, I was texting you the other day. It's like, we talk about consistently consistency in sales. And I literally, every time I talk to Logan, that's the number one thing we talk about. Um, I'm going to say it to him until he literally wants to throw up. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's so important because, you know, there's always challenges in business, but every challenge you face in business is so much easier when you have money in the bank. Yeah. 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 It tends to be a little less stressful. Yeah. You, know, you can at least pay your bills. All things being equal, it's, it's better to have it than not have it. Uh, money is not the most important thing in the world, but it really does. It truly does matter with with uh, a business. So, you know, he's he's done incredibly well. Um, we closed a uh, closed a double job last week, so it's it's uh, an investor that bought two properties, and it's um, I think each job is right at about forty eight hundred, which is. Yeah nothing to scoff about nothing to scoff at at all and, and the best part is it's it's two homes that are right next to each other in the same neighborhood so in terms of like you know travel and 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 working out uh logistics it's it's way easier oh yeah for yeah. sure now you guys have multiple crews at this point so yep. you're in the position where you could do both of them potentially at the same time right yeah we're going to be doing both at the same time so Right now, we are um, basically, I think we've got seven jobs on the book through the end of February. And then we've got a, I think, three jobs already booked out through March. And the, so I guess five, five jobs booked out through March now because of the, uh, the double job that we booked. Awesome. Yeah. So really, really excited about that, man. And, uh, you know, the, the crews are doing well. They're, they're, they're both, uh, we're all happy and content. So pretty excited about that. Yeah. You have a, a new hire that hasn't been on your team for too long, but from what I hear, he's, he's picking things up pretty quickly. Picking things up really quickly. Um, he came from a, uh, he came from the world of, of, I guess, entertainment, you know, um, he, he worked what kind of entertainment. Yeah. Is it entertainment? I don't know. He, he, worked, he worked at a bar and, and managed the bar, which, um, you know, in, in the hierarchy of businesses, because, uh, you know, I've, I've had a couple of my time, I put, I put bars at the bottom of that. You know, it's, it's crazy hours. It's, it's generally low margins. There's a lot of turnover. So, like, if you can manage a bar. Yeah, that's not uh, easy. A lot of other jobs seem really, really, really simple. So, he's... Um, He's been an absolute rock star. He's done phenomenal for us for culture um, because he's, he's one of those guys. He's always in a good mood, always super positive, uh, problem solving. We had um, we had a job last week where uh, it was we, we kind of misjudged the hours it was going to take. And so he finished his job early and went over to help the other tech just because he's a nice guy. So, uh, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, yeah, good. That is a very good son. Good things happen when you hire good people. Yeah, for sure. And it, it sounds like you guys have had a pretty good experience with with hiring, and that can uh, can sometimes be a bottleneck or a limiting factor. Yeah, with, with people trying to grow their business. Um, but another limiting factor could also be sales, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, and more importantly, consistency of sales and, and creating that pipeline and that, that queue so that you're not getting kinks in your, your pipeline or, or having to go a week without doing work. 
it's pretty much the best way to avoid the feast or famine that seems to be so prevalent in the trades. Um, you know, one of the, the problems, when I talk to people that are interested in cabinet startup, one of the issues that, that we hear a lot is they've got inconsistency in business. Um, and so, you know, they have, they have months that are pretty good. You know, they'll make five, six, seven thousand dollars profit. And then they'll have months where they're struggling. They're making, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars in profit. And it can be really hard for you as a business owner to bounce back for that, really, for a few reasons. The first being your bills tend to be consistent regardless of your income. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the bank is not interested in why your business didn't do well this month. And so, you know, it, it, it can be really tough when, when that's the case. Um, the second thing is, is from a mental perspective. Um, I personally feel like the, the roller coaster effect of business, like having really high highs followed by really low lows can be disheartening to say the least. Yeah, because we tend to react to our current circumstances, and so we we overestimate things or we underestimate things that lead us to reacting in a way that doesn't necessarily serve us. Yep. And so when we have a bunch of jobs, we're underestimating the importance of sales. When we don't have a bunch of jobs, we're overestimating our ability to get back into the into the flow. Yep. Um, and so getting consistency can be really hard, especially with newer trades people or newer businesses that are in the trades, because oftentimes when you're first starting off, you might be the only person on the team. <laughs> and so if you're doing everything, if you're responsible for everything, it often doesn't mean that you can actually do everything all the time. And so you have to really be strategic with distributing your focus so that you can maintain a sort of balance that allows the business to keep moving forward. Uh, once you get to the point where you have salespeople or you have a sales team um, like we do, then it's more about lead flow than having availability. Yeah. At the beginning, it's really, and it has to be intentional to create that availability because feeling like you're, you're busy can oftentimes be a distraction where you feel like you're working all the time because you're on a job site, or maybe you're at the point where you're training someone. But if you don't keep juggling appropriately, then one of those balls are going to fall. And if you allow that ball to be sales, then it can create a kink in your pipeline. And that's going to bring even more stress, more frustration for everyone involved. Because if you're paying your guys commission, that means they don't get paid that week, which is pretty frustrating. And if you don't pay them commission, that means you're paying them anyways. <laughs> and that's frustrating for you as the business owner. And yep. so it's not really good for anyone involved. Um, and so at the very beginning, creating a, a game plan that allows you to consistently sell can better than not uh, keep that calendar full. Yeah. And that kind of becomes the question is, well, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, adding to that, one of the things that everybody and, and everybody's been in this situation, like there's a, there's a thing that I, we always, we often talk about in sales called commission breath, right? It's like when, when you need money, you tend to be pushier and, and more aggressive or um, oh, yeah. desperate in your sales calls. And, and people, people are sharp. They pick up on that. Like yep. when you go into a sales call and you need the money, that they, they figure that out pretty quickly. And then the adding to that, making it a little bit worse. Like if I'm talking to somebody that offers a service and that person like smells like they need money, I'm like, well, why is their business going so bad? What do I not know? Should I be on, on guard right now? Like, I don't, I don't want to hire somebody that's going to do a bad job. And so it actually makes it harder for you to get the business because you don't have the business. And it yeah. becomes this kind of, you know, vicious cycle of desperation. Yeah. And that desperate energy, as you mentioned, can certainly be perceived by the, the homeowners and it allows the salesperson to react emotionally as well. And they're going to start blaming other things uh, aside from their energy or the way they're approaching the appointment. 
Um, I, I've certainly have seen that with salespeople. Um, whenever I've had a salesperson hit a dry spell, the first thing they blame are the leads. And they want to convince me how we charge too much or how the homeowners, uh, they're, they're not ready yet or um, they're, ha they have too many appointments scheduled. They'll come up with all of these reasons on why they aren't closing the deal and completely block off any reasons that I can provide for why they are still able to close the deal. And it's gotten to the point where I've had to tell the salesperson, well, if the market is changing like you're suggesting, I obviously need to know that. And so the best way for me to understand and believe what you're telling me is to go find out myself. And so let me go and do some appointments. You could take a break or do some follow-ups. Let me go on appointments this week or I'll give you some appointments and I'll take some of the others and we'll see what's up. And uh, sure enough, that I've done this several, several times uh, throughout the years. So sure enough, when I go out there with optimism, with uh, the intention to present the homeowner reasons why they should move forward. Uh, we always get back in, into line where we need to be. Yeah. And um, it, having that belief in yourself can dramatically influence the outcome of these appointments. And when you're coming from a, a point of scarcity or needing that deal to close, it's certainly going to affect you in a, in a negative way. It's, it's like when you're, when you're dating people or, you know, back when you used to do that. <laughs> Were you telling me girls don't like desperate boys? Exactly. Why? And, and we don't like desperate girls, uh, you know, at least for long term. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's going to watch this and, <laughs> and you know, I, mean, it, I, I think people generally, and it, it's unfortunate um, because there are people in desperate situations that need help. But right. as a rule, people don't want to be around desperate people right? Because it feels like they're going to drag you down. They're going to try and take advantage of you. Um, but we, you know, it's human nature. You, you don't want to, nobody wants to go hunting with a guy that's starving because he's clearly not very good at it. You know, it's, 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 you know, yeah. call it what it is. And then you can spend all of your life trying to, uh, you know, overcome human nature, but a lot of those things is for a reason. Although as a side note, it is really important at home for anybody that's got a business that's struggling or is dealing with a, you know, sales rep that's not performing. Um, one thing that you do really well in your business and, and uh, it comes across pretty regularly is when you've got a problem in your business, you step up and solve it. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that we talk about sometimes, um, and I, I repeat this a lot. A mentor told me this one time. And I thought it was just absolute genius. It's, you know, you, you can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead where you won't go. Like you as the business owner, have to be willing to get in and get dirty and do all of the things about your business that are hard and challenging so that you can show other people it's possible to. If you're, if you're, if you have a business, you're not willing to do these things. You think you're going to hire somebody and hiring somebody to come do the stuff that you're not willing to even try to do is going to solve your business. Unless you're a phenomenal hirer and you've got a ton of experience with talent management, you're probably going to find it backfires. Yeah, for sure. And just like how, your potential customers might, you know, like they say, buyers are liars in the world of sales, yeah. or they'll, they'll make up reasons why they aren't able to close or move forward that day. Your employees will do the same thing, you know, because if they didn't get the desirable outcome, they are going to try to justify that. And if you are a business owner who hasn't been in the, uh, the shoes of whoever is talking, you're talking to, um, you know, for example, if one of your technicians is telling you the job has to take the delayed amount of time that you're now yeah. having to adapt to, um, if you've done work yourself, then you know the reality of things. You know things can certainly come up and cause delays, but you also can have potential ways to prevent those things from happening or better ways to adapt to the situation that allows for a a more speedy recovery. Um, so, you know, being able to be in the position where you're at, you're not asking anything from anyone on something that you haven't done yourself is a, a very strong position. Yeah. yeah. It's going to allow you to train people a lot more effectively, obviously. Um, but it's also going to allow you to build a better culture yeah. because if you're the leader that doesn't accept excuses or certainly doesn't accept failure, 
then you're more prone to look for solutions more than uh, reasons why you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a good culture to establish. Especially if you're, if you're able and willing to go do it yourself, you know, it's one thing to say, I don't accept this, but it's another to say, I don't accept this and I'll show you why. Yeah. And it may not be a, a requirement. There's plenty of examples of business owners that don't necessarily have a lot of experience in the fulfillment of the, the product or service that they offer. But there's obviously plenty of examples where it could be an advantage to have that experience. Sure. And I know with our specific trade, it's really helpful to, uh, to understand the process because we can jump in and fill the void and, and pick up the slack whenever needed. But it's not the case in everyone's business. Um, and so it's good to have at least someone on your team that can fill in the, the gaps, yeah. um, you know, whatever that, you know, if it, it I mean, in, in the, in the world of specialty trade that you don't have experience in, in the world of trades, when we're talking about people that are going from zero to six figures and, and listen, they're going to be exceptions to anything. Like if you have a million dollars in the bank, you can afford to make enough mistakes right. in hiring the right person that it may not be an issue. Um, but I, I know from having literally had conversations with thousands of contractors, most of them don't have a million dollars in the bank and those, those, those failures aren't an option. And so, right. you know, like in, in the right circumstances, I, I think that would, that, that can absolutely be true. I know guys that have hired out businesses that they don't understand and just brought in experts, but they had capital, right? Yeah. You know, if you don't have the capital, I think that's a lot less of a, a thing, which you know, kind of is a great way to tie a bow on what we were talking about earlier, which is, yeah. okay, we want to have sales and we want to have sales consistently, right? So how do we do it, right? If, if Stephen, if I was a contractor and I called you and said, hey, man, I worked my butt off last year and I only made $40,000, you know, it was just real hard to find client sales, super inconsistent. What would you tell me? That there's probably certain things you're doing too much of and there's other things that you're not doing enough of and having to really pick that apart will be what gives us clarity. Um, if it's a, a tradesperson that has, is telling me, like you mentioned, it's been working their butt off, but they didn't make a ton of money. They're probably working too much in the business. And that kind of segues into the importance of having consistent sales, because that is what can oftentimes bring more cash flow than the fulfillment of your service specifically. Um, depending on your operational team, you could pr more than likely only finish a certain amount of jobs within, let's say, a, a week. Yeah. Well, in that same amount of time, you could probably close more deals and collect deposits on those deals, bringing in more cash flow than completing the projects that you started that week. Uh, for example, in our business, we like to do one project that starts on Monday and finishes by Friday. The more crews we have, the more projects we can do, but each crew does one job a week. If it takes a week to do that project and that project brings in 50% of the invoice because we collect 50% as a deposit, then we can bring in way more cash by closing more than one job than we do by finishing one job. We're maxed out from a, a unit of one. One crew can only finish one job every week. There's there's not a lot of margin there. Maybe you can have that job finish a day sooner, but you can find that one guy that's willing to work 100 hours a week. But even then, that's not even sustainable. So no. let's just say one crew can do one job per week. Well, one salesperson can close a lot more than one job in that same period of time. And if you're getting 50% up front and 50% on the back end, then you're going to generate way more cash if you close three jobs that week instead of finishing one job that week. You, of course, want to maintain production. There's obvious benefits to that. But there's almost a higher priority on consistent sales because in regards to cash flow because it brings in more cash flow. And it also keeps your pipeline full, which allows you to make longer term decisions with your business because you have uh, a level of predictability when it comes to revenue and, and potential profits. So that allows you to hire and train people to uh, invest in marketing more effectively. Um, there's a lot of other things you could do when you have money, like we were talking about earlier. So 
if you're finding yourself in a position where you can't do any more work, but you're, you're too low on cash flow, then you need to figure out how to sell more. And that kind of takes us back to the original question is how do I do that? Well, you're going to have to do that with what you have. And so it will, of course, vary depending on what resources you have. If you have more people on your team, you can redistribute responsibilities to open up the ability for one person to focus on sales. But let's just say so that person, one person. Yeah, it's a one or two person team where you know, you're having to work a little bit on the jobs, but you're, and you're also managing the business and you're also doing sales. A lot of contractors are working for themselves by themselves with maybe a helper. Yeah. And so let's speak to those people first. What I did, because that's how I started. I started by myself. Um, and so I had to figure out how to sell consistently while still get the jobs done consistently. And so what I would do is I would set up my appointments on the weekends. Yep. So I would do the projects Monday through Friday and try to do all my sales appointments on Saturday because I was only a team of one. I only needed, <laughs> I didn't need to close that many jobs to keep me super busy. So if I go to five appointments in a day and I close three of them, then I almost filled up a whole month worth of work in that one week. And so I can book myself out four to eight weeks in advance very easily. Yeah. And that, and because I was able to do that easily, that gave me enough cash to then go hire a helper. And once I got a helper, then I was able to do a job Monday through Friday with that helper. But on certain days during the week, while my helper is on the job site or while my helper is working on the doors, I'll go to more appointments. Yeah. And that means I could do, let's just call it Wednesday. Wednesday, um, my helper is spraying top coats on the frames. And so while he's spraying, for the several hours during that day, I can go and do appointments. Well, I'm also going to go to appointments on Saturday. So now I'm going to even more appointments, my five appointments on Saturday, plus my, let's call it two to three appointments on Wednesday, that eight appointments, I can have the opportunity to close more jobs, bring in more cash, and then fill up the pipeline. So my helper can then evolve into a full on tech. Yeah. So as that evolves, now my tech is doing a job. I'm doing a job while also going to appointments on. So we're talking about two jobs a week right now and still. Doing yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, because I'll always have at least one day during the week. And sometimes you're going to be spraying your doors in the shop or there's going to be times where you're waiting on paint to dry. And so you may not get an entire day free during that week. Well, you should at least try to get one appointment in that day. If you know you're going to be spraying doors all day, Give yourself an appointment towards the end of the day, so that which is beneficial for the homeowners because a lot of them are working. Yeah. Um, spray your doors during the afternoon. Go to your appointment in the evening. Yeah, well, man, four, well, man, four, four beautiful things that came out of that for people that were really listening. Um, you know, one one thing that I think is is easy to forget because you know people that have followed us or seen us for a while know that you know you've got seven figure shops. And it's really easy sometimes when you're starting a business and you see somebody that's producing over a million dollars to be like, oh, well, it's easy for them because X, Y, Z, you know, they have this money or they have this stuff. Like you, start off you yeah, you went through that process, right? That was all stuff that you figured out through trial and error. And I'm willing to bet that it wasn't quite as easy as, you know, the, the process you just made. It probably is for you now because you've learned a lot of those mistakes. But uh, a lot of the advice that you give came from the fact that you've done this before. Um, but two things I really loved. One taking advantage of, of weekends. Like if you're a business owner and you're hustling and you're trying to grow, you're probably going to have to work a little bit harder than the average nine to five worker, at least in the beginning, right? We're, we're, we're investing on the front end so that we can have more on the back end. And I think that's really powerful for people to hear. Um, super powerful, especially if you can take pride in that. Yes. I took pride in my willingness to stay up till two o'clock in the morning because I promised I'd the homeowner I'd be done by Friday. I took pride in working my ass off. I took pride in making some of the sacrifices because I had zero doubt where it would lead me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm running multi seven figure shops from a van now 
driving across the country and it's <laughs> they should mention the driving across the country part otherwise it sounds weird <laughs> yeah I, i'm i'm intentionally homeless or i'm never away from my home however you yeah. want to look at it yeah, yeah, yeah. um but it, it was from following a very simple process you, you mentioned difficulty it certainly is difficult it it takes a lot of willpower and not everyone has that that has to be decided on very early that yeah. you are going to be willing to go through the hurdles, be willing to take the sacrifices and be a hundred percent certain in the inevitable outcome. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, and yeah. knowing that failure is just part of that process. It leaves you in a position where you're not overly concerned about what's to come. And there, it doesn't matter what business you're in. Um, there are people online sharing their experiences and, wanting to create a smoother path or a more clear path for people to follow. And so you can find advice anywhere if, you, if you're willing to look. But, you know, it, it, it's a matter of taking the pride in the upfront sacrifice and hustle, because that is what allows you mentally to accept the, the results, being feeling as if you deserve what you have, because it, it, a lot of times with people, if they don't feel they deserve what they have they will lose it on unconsciously they will sabotage themselves there's a, there, there's a quote it's uh you know we accept the love that we feel that we deserve and, and that's not yeah. just from other people it's also in what we do to ourselves because uh, For sure. joe rogan talks about this and i love it he's like you know he, he works out four or five days a week and you know he sometimes talk to people that don't want to lift and they're like yeah i just don't have time for that and he's like well it's not that i have more time or less time it's that right Every week I wake up and I tell myself that I owe it to myself because I love me. Like I owe it to myself to go do these things and, and recognizing that, you know, commitment at that level is a form of love to yourself is really important. The other thing that I, I really love about what you said, though, that, that I think is super important, I hope people take away from this is when you describe that step, it wasn't like you went from like, hey, I'm doing one job a week, I've got all these sales to boom, four jobs a week. It's like, I've got one job a week. I'm working all Saturdays and I bring on a helper. And then I had two or three on Wednesdays and you continue on that path. And, and people think there's like this giant gap from not success to success. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it is small, intentional. Yeah. The intentional part is really important. It's small, intentional, incremental steps. And, you know, having the intention of knowing where you're going is absolutely important because one thing that I, I think is, can't be dangerous for people is there are people that will go out, they'll sell a whole bunch of stuff and think, oh my God, I've lost capital, I'm rich. And they go waste it on stupid things that they don't need. And then, they, and then they struggle. Like if you're going to use sales as the function that scales your business, you need to know where you're going. You need to have a plan. And we have umpteen thousand resources for people that want to plan. We've got the, the one page business plan. We've got the, you know, the Eisenhower matrix. Like you should have a plan. If you're running and you don't know which direction you're going, you're basically going in circles. But that small incremental step focus with, I know where I'm going next. I know that putting this work is going to return to me. Just that mindset and focus alone will be enough to help the average contractor scale to that next level. I would go as far to say it, it, it guarantees your success. It doesn't guarantee a timeline, but if you have that mentality, your success is guaranteed. And when you start to notice that, when you start to notice yourself of achieving the goals that you put direct intention behind, you'll start to realize that you are, to a great extent, the creator of your own life story. Yeah. And once you start to realize that and you believe it, you can leverage that fact the rest of your life. And that's why I love working with younger people because a lot of times they they don't have the experience, so it's easy to accept ignorance, and it's easy to establish that they have a lot to learn, so they're already starting from a point of curiosity and starting from a position of a student, yeah. and it allows them to take the information and run with it. A lot of, um, a lot of struggle that we find with either partners or students is breaking old habits. It's breaking through limiting beliefs, but if you can program yourself to believe and understand that what you focus on is what you go towards in all areas of life. And once you start seeing a few examples of that, you know, especially with, with this business in, uh, in particular, 
you know, you get to a point where you've seen a lot of what's going to happen. Okay. Um, you've gone through the challenges. Okay, what happens if the homeowner changes their mind on the color? What happens if a guy, you know, leaves in the middle of a job? What happens if the kitchen catches on fire? What happens if, you know, you get audited or your insurance company wants to hit you with a premium audit and triple your premium? Or, you know, once you go through all of those things, um, it becomes a very uh, familiar game. Yep. And you've gone through the obstacles. You've built that that self-assurance. And uh, that's when things can get really fun. And it's not that the challenges go away. They just become a lot easier to deal with. Yes. And it allows you to focus more on the game and not so much on the, the, the reactions of things. It allows you to react less so you can be a little bit more strategic with the game. And, uh, and it just becomes a little bit more fun because you know that you can evolve with intention. I mean, you, you're going to have to react like in some ways you're going to have to react less regardless. Cause like, yeah. you know, getting on, on, on that same topic of sales, like if, if we understand and um, you know, the, the purpose I think of today's podcast is for people to really understand, like sales is the thing that is the most important. This is not just like, Hey, tips, this is what you need to go do with sales. Cause lots of people's sales tips wouldn't matter for them. Cause they're not making it a primary focus of their business. Like right. I would tell somebody that is starting a business. If you didn't spend some amount of your time every day focused on an action that was either going to get you more business or get you more sales, either going to bring in leads or bring in clients, you did not spend your day effectively. For sure. You yeah. Did. You have to spend time on it every single week, every single day, if you can, because yeah, there's always can. leads you got to follow up with. Yes. There's always new leads that you're, bring, you're bringing in. There's follow-ups you got to um, address or, or contact from appointments you've already gone to. Yep. And so you're dealing with the past, present, and future um, every day. Yeah. And even if you don't like sales, it, it doesn't go away. Like I talk to guys sometimes and go, well, I'm not really a salesman. It's like, dude, if you're not a salesman, you're going to have a hard time being a businessman. Right. Yeah. Because you're either selling somebody on why they should work for you, on why they should show up to work on time, or why you know they should give you a five star review. Or like exactly, there's no part of your business that you're not selling somebody something. Right. right. And so you have to know and have to understand the value of being able to promote that message in, in a positive way, and that the ability to focus on that and make that a consistent theme within your business is, it's it's probably the most important thing. I hate I hate to say it, but it's probably. Yeah. Thing. You'll guarantee you'll never go broke because even if all of your guys decide to say, you know, F you Wilson, we hate you. We're going to leave. Happened before. <laughs> I <laughs> doubt that. But let's say if that were to happen, if you have committed to learning the skill of sales or at least understanding and practicing with consistency, the process of sales, then you can always take those jobs that you've already collected deposits on and you could sub it out to one of your competitors that will gladly uh, do the the work. Now you may not make any profit on the remaining 50%, but you, you, you still are able to carve out some profit from the deposits that you've collected. And you at least don't end up with a calendar full of projects. You're not able to do, yeah. you know, other businesses will gladly pay you to give them business. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, I, there's a little bit more safety on leaning more on sales and um, there is a balance for sure. You don't want to be overly focused on sales and not enough on fulfillment because your reputation is typically developed you need with to be able to fulfillment. See to drive a car, hundred percent. You got to be able to see to drive a car, right? You you, the, you have to be able yeah. to fulfill. It's a minimum, especially with with Google, right? Google and Facebook. If you do bad work, it's going to haunt you. <laughs> yeah. So you do want to fulfill or have people on your team to fulfill with with care and pride, but there is uh, more importance, I would say, on the sales. And so we only have a few more minutes left that we can squeeze in. We got to jump on a group call soon, but to kind of reiterate some of the things and to maybe infuse a couple more tips, you want to be selling consistently because it's going to increase your cash flow. Yes. It's going to help you learn how to build a culture because you, you're going to develop this, the skill of sales. You're going to understand how to emphasize on, on the positive reasons on why someone would want to get closer to where you want to get them. Um, and having a process behind it is hugely important. So we can say where we can even commit to, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on business development for a little bit every day. Well, what do I actually do? 
Well, you need to have some form of organization. We we like to use Trello or Active Campaign, uh, it's, which is a similar platform to to manage the leads. Active Campaign you can kind of do a little bit more with, but the purpose being to manage the leads that come through so that you know who you followed up with already, who you need to in the future, uh, and you can take notes on the development of those leads. But you got to be doing it, doing it a little bit every day, and regardless of the trade you're in, you're going to have some downtime. You know, in our business with cabinets, cabinet refinishing, there's going to be times where you're waiting on paint to dry. So that's a great time to follow up on leads. If you're in another industry, you may have a period in your process that enables you to, to do just that, to, to follow up on leads or to uh, go to an appointment or, or whatnot. And so you got to figure out where that time is that you can carve. Um, and that means you're going to be multitasking at times. You yeah. know, we all do it. And so now doing it with intention is what can actually move the needle with your business. So determining where throughout your week you can fit in time to go to an appointment or a sales appointment or where you can fit in time to follow up with leads is crucial. And if you don't determine that, then like Wilson mentioned, you're going to be too reactive to a point where you're, you're going to end up running in circles and you don't have enough clarity or purpose behind what you're doing. And you're not going to get where you're trying to go as fast as possible. And having that clarity involves making purposely making that thing the focus. And so um, yep. we, we've talked about this on, on a couple of previous podcasts, but we'll throw it in the, in the links for, for this one. If you're having trouble prioritizing or focusing, like one of the things that, that me and Logan have done over the past couple of weeks to really make sales a priority is every single day, it's kind of part of like the Eisenhower matrix, right? Every single day, right? He goes through, these are my top priorities and this is where they rank. And so for those of you that have struggled with this in the past, we'll have a link here under this video for the Eisenhower matrix that will help you prioritize that. Because if you're not prioritizing well, it's easy for these things to fall in the background. And as soon as you lose control over them, it's, it's an uphill battle. Right. And so with that said, if you find that your production schedule or your calendar, whatever you like to call it, if you're not booked out at least four weeks in advance, you need to be doing something with sales every single day or planning on going on appointments every single week. You know, Once you get to that six, seven, eight week out, maybe you can take a few days off or maybe take one week off from sales and focus more maybe on your referral network. Instead of that time in, an, in a house, you're spending that time meeting with other vendors or other people that could potentially refer you. But once you get back to that six or five or four week out period, you need to get back on sales because if you try to do it last minute, you might run into a uh, an unfortunate dry spell. Just you know, like you can't necessarily control when the jobs are going to come in specifically, but you can control your effort. And if you deploy that effort consistently or on a regular basis, you should expect results on a regular basis. And so. And, and if you're uh, listening to him talk and you hear him say, if you're not booked out six weeks out, you can start focusing and you think to yourself, oh my God, I've never been booked out six weeks. Send an email to support at cabinetstartup.com. I have something for you specifically to help with that. Like we want to see you guys crush it. Shoot us an email, support at cabinetstartup.com. I will send you something to help you with that process. You, every contractor should be able to book it four weeks out. Awesome. Yeah, definitely take advantage of that offer, guys. So with that said, I, I hope we helped highlight the importance of sales and maybe gave you some insights or tips on how you can approach that more effectively in your business. And uh, like Wilson mentioned, shoot them up or hit them up for, uh, don't, shoot up. for don't shoot them up, <laughs> but hit them up uh, for that offer. And if you have any questions, guys, uh, same email address, support at cabinetstartup.com. We'll be happy to help you. With that said, we'll, we'll talk to you guys, same place, same time next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Have a great one.